All right, we're on to the last step here. And uh, I'm gonna combine step seven and eight in a single video um, because running your reports is very simple. All right, so you've got the Google Analytics extension installed. And the first thing it's gonna have you do is um, connect your account and log in. And when that's done, you'll get these three options. It might even by default want you to create a new report. I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> You don't have to create a new report. Uh, everything should flow with already got in here. You just have to edit existing reports. But um, should you choose to create a whole new one, say you have four that you want to run, you would create this new report and it actually pops up a window here um, to like build out what you need. And then what happens is when you create it, it adds it into an additional column here. So really, <clears throat> you can skip this step and just put the data into these cells and you'll get the same thing. So each column turns into its own tab here and everything you need is in the cells. So I've pre-populated what the cell mostly needs. Um, the only thing you're going to need to update is your view ID and uh, your filters here. So uh, the, we'll start with the view ID. The view ID comes from within Google Analytics and it's a number. Um, if you go to your settings and admin and you look at the accounts, apps, and then views, the number underneath this view here is going to be the one you need to put in. So that's the number. Uh, do not mess with these dates. These dates actually are referenced to the, uh, I'll move this sharing thing. The different dates are referenced here. So they actually run off of these two cells. So which means that uh, every time you change these dates, uh, you'll, they're automatically reflected in the configuration report. You'll just need to refresh the report to get um, the, the views for those pages. Um, I've built it so that you've got uh, page views as your metric. I've added a dimension here. This isn't necessary for the way the sheet is built, but if what happens is it puts them below here, so you can have like a breakdown of your source and mediums. Um, so, <clears throat> again, you can remove it if you want. <clears throat> and then the other thing that you need to update is the page path. So this is the page wherever your form lives. Uh, this right here is equal, like, means contains. And so if the page path contains demo or contact, you know, whatever the URL is with yours, you'll need to update that. So... Uh, <clears throat> Google's done a pretty good job providing help. I've put, uh, they've got this here that's automatically here for the add-on. Um, I've also added uh, a metrics explorer here, which talks about all of the different values that you can put in these metrics and dimensions fields. So uh, it, it should have like the filters operators too, like contains and whatever. So um, use those two links for help if you get stuck when you're switching things around. All right, so what'll then happen is it has it here. Each one of these columns is a sheet. You'll see that the report name is tied to the sheet name. If you were to like change the report name here, it'll actually create a new sheet and could break down your formulas and you just have to update things. Um, so that's fine, just keep it aware that if you decide to change the name of your report, it's going to create new tabs, and then you will need to update the references in all the cells of the tab. So um, we've already gone through how to do that in a previous video. Uh, you just hit uh, Control F and then search within formulas, and then you can do a mass update. Running the report is easy. So you just have to come to extensions, Google Analytics, and run reports. It'll cycle through and then your pages will show up in uh, the dashboard data. <clears throat> now the way it's built, 
is the page views actually won't show up on the quarterly, monthly, or weekly view because the report populates it as a single value here, and that's the value that we're using. It is possible to break it down um, by date if you want, but for the total formula on this dashboard data, it's uh, we built it so that we have that single value here. So uh, forms, uh, the page views don't show up on this, but uh, form submissions and down do. All right, uh, <clears throat> that's it. Once all the data is in, you're ready to go. You should have your full funnel view based on the date range that you set and can look at your win rate and the value of a form submission. And we've got here how much it takes to provide an additional $1,000 in MRR. So that's all the marketing attribution you need. It shouldn't take too long to set it up. Good luck and hope uh, it's on to better marketing for you.